Hey guys, been a minute since you guys saw me on camera. Well, I'm back now. I have got my mojo back after many, many months of other things going on in the world and my own personal life and all that kind of thing. And finally, I'm getting around to reviewing all the Star Wars books that came out. Although, quick note, I've decided to kind of rebrand from uh, Star Wars reviews to more analyses uh, because I'm not a professional reviewer. I'm not a professional movie reviewer, not a professional book reviewer, not a professional comic reviewer, none of that crap. I am a guy in his Star Wars Doubt office uh, talking about Star Wars to you wonderful people. So with that tiny bit of housekeeping out of the way, let's talk a little bit about, probably a lot of it actually, about Star Wars Shadowfall colon an Alphabet Squadron story. This is book two in the trilogy from Alexander Freed of Alphabet Squadron. Alexander Freed also wrote uh, Star Wars Battlefront Twilight Company and the Rogue One novelization, both fantastic other war uh, novels in the Star Wars universe. For those of you that haven't seen my review of the previous book in this series, uh, simply titled Alphabet Squadron, I adore that book. It is quite literally my favorite Star Wars novel, like, bar none. Um, and that's because I don't know if I like the characters or not. It is a very character-based story. Alexander Freed tends to do that with all the books of his that I've read, where he concentrates solely on conflicted characters, um, especially in um, war scenarios, you know, warriors, soldiers, pilots, whatever. He's very, very good, in my opinion, at capturing the the very adult, very emotionally complex themes of who are you fighting for? Why are you fighting? Um, are you fighting for the right reasons? Did you gain your skills in a decent way, or were you always a decent human being, or a decent being in the Star Wars universe's case? And, in my opinion, this book does that fantastically well. Now, I did have to get through this book three times before I settled on, yeah, I still really like this book. It still doesn't quite work as well as the first book did for me, but it's fantastic after I consumed it three times, twice on the audiobook version and once reading it. I listened to it twice, right in a row, and then I read it, read the actual printed version that I've got here, and I, I'm thinking it might have been the uh, narrator for the audiobook. Uh, Nothing against the narrator, but they did switch narrators in between the first book and this one. And uh, it just, for whatever reason, their narration just didn't work for me. Uh, at least as well as I wanted it to. Especially after just my first listen through of the book, it, I, I was almost disappointed. And there's still some stuff in this book that I don't, that doesn't quite work for me. But with that being said, this is very much... And my exact very first note after I finished uh, listening to it and uh, twice I go through and take notes while I'm on my print read. And one of my big highlighted notes in here is very much the Star Wars middle chapter. Slower, much more internalized, much more smaller in scale, and uh, much more emotional. Now, with that being said... It really depends on whether or not you enjoy The Empire Strikes Backs and The Last Jedi's um, in terms of that darker, more gritty, more emotionally painful, much more slower paced storytelling than what you got in the first book. Is this a recommended read for me? I mean, yeah, I really enjoyed it. But now I'm going to start getting into spoilers uh, regarding the book. So if you haven't... Uh, read this book, maybe go uh, listen to it on Audible. Use Alex and Molly's Audible code or Force Center's Audible code or whatever and uh, listen to it for free on that. Anyways, spoilers. And I'm going to start off with the one thing that really still doesn't quite work for me. And that 
is Keys. Soren Keys is the primary antagonist in this, in this book in particular. He was Erika Quell's mentor, Erika Quell being the, the main character of the Alphabet Squadron books. Erika Quell was once part of Shadow Wing, the unit that Alphabet Squadron's trying to find and catch and dismantle, destroy, eliminate, whatever. Um, and Soren Keys eventually basically decides to come back, which... <sighs> Honestly, I think my problem is, is that he wasn't villainous enough for me because he's just trying to keep his comrades alive. He disappeared after Erika Quell left, after he ordered Erika Quell to leave um, Shadow Wing and go and defect to the Empire, uh, to the, the New Republic, the newly minted New Republic, after she uh, executed Operation Cinder, or her part in execution C in, uh, in uh, Operation Cinder, which uh, effectively led into the death of millions of people on a planet called Necronus, uh, because the Emperor is a tiny little man that just has to uh, rip apart the galaxy because he's a sore loser. Um, even from after he mostly died. Anyways, Soren Keys was a, was a real struggle for me as a character, and that's primarily because, to me, he was kind of labeled as antagonist. My brain immediately went, oh, so he's the antagonist because he's the, the head of Shadow Wing, which is the people that Alphabet Squadron's trying to get. He wasn't, he was almost too sympathetic for me, where I didn't, like, I was kind of sort of rooting for him, with that being said, though, all the way through this book, there's this little, there's the messenger droid that you see in Shattered Empire and Battlefront 2 and, um, uh, ooh, um, the, the Aftermath series, which are the things that executed or, you know, sent out the orders for Operation Cinder after the Emperor's death, part of the contingency plan. And that droid that uh, messenger droid it, it's it's treated almost with religious reverence by quite a bit of shadowing except for soren keys and he's desperately trying to give them a win give them something else to do to give them something else to focus on other than just hoping that this to him dead emperor is going to save them because clearly the new republic is going to win this war there's no uh, there's not a strong enough uh, person to take on to take on the mantle of emperor or a new emperor, so they're not going to save him, and he needs to keep them alive. But they're putting all their faith in effectively a droid uh, that doesn't do anything. And it wasn't until the very end of my first listen through this book that I realized that oh, it's that droid, it's the ghost of the emperor that is meant to be the antagonist in this book, at least to me. And if I would have realized that earlier, I would have enjoyed the book earlier. Now, with that being said, I haven't talked with Alexander Freed. I don't know if that was his goal, but I think if I would have started this book with that expectation or with that understanding that, oh, it's the ghost of the emperor that's the real antagonist of this book, then I would have enjoyed the Soren Keys part of this book a lot more. Soren Keys was in the first book, but only tiny little snippets, and he was only Devin. And it wasn't revealed. Everybody can kind of, anybody that read that book, you kind of know that that's probably somebody from Shadow Wing. Um, it's revealed at the end of that book that that's Soren Keys, whatever. But in this book, Soren Keys takes a lot of extra page time and um, runtime of the audiobook. And the only time I really was interested in it, in Soren Keys' stuff was when it was involving that droid. Most of the time, whenever Soren Keys was popping up, I was more like, oh, okay, so we're gonna learn what Soren Keys is doing so it makes sense as to what the the uh, um, the Alphabet Squadron people are doing. Now, moving on to the stuff that I absolutely loved, and there's a lot of it, so this is gonna be a real effing long video. <laughs> Let's start off with Chastnachatic, and Chastnachatic is my favorite disaster child. <laughs> she is so messed up and her priorities are so screwed and she has this weird death wish thing, but now she doesn't, but she kind of does because her whole hero is Jen Erso and she just wants to, 
you know, as, as a soldier, you're going to have this weird mentality of I'm already dead. Uh, so that then it pushes you past that fear barrier when you are flying into battle or charging into battle, which is very common whenever you look at any sort of autobiographies, biographies, or interviews with veterans of any conflict. Um, but she wants her death to mean something, but now that she's fighting this fight after the Emperor is dead and as the Empire is crumbling, you're running into this issue where it's very similar to uh, the fall of Germany in Nazi Germany in 1945, end of 1944, beginning of 1945, where at this point they can't win. There is no way that they're going to win. And anybody that dies in those ensuing months, those deaths don't have to happen because the winner is decided. There is no chance for the Galactic Empire or Nazi Germany in the real world case to come back. There's no way for them to win. And Chasnachadic spends a massive portion of her arc in this book dealing with that and wrestling with that, that the whole way that she kept herself fighting and kept that fear at bay, that fear of death at bay, was to become like her hero, Jin Erso. Well, now anybody that dies, in uh, an exact quote from her is, anybody that dies now is either stupid or uh, cursed. <sighs> And that's a really strong, heavy theme for you to tackle in, especially a printed book. Now, moving on to the next member of Alphabet Squadron out of the five, um, Kairos kind of disappears for most of this book. It kind of felt like, to me, it kind of felt like Alexander Freed didn't quite know what to do with Kairos, so just took her off the board. Uh, her seri serious injury... Uh, about halfway through the book, maybe a third of the way through the book, and that takes her pretty much out of the book for the rest of the story. Yeah, Kairos, uh, Kairos, I'm hoping, especially, especially now that what has happened to her has happened to her, we're going to get a lot more of her in book three, because we didn't get a bunch of Kairos in book one, and we got even less Kairos in this one, which I was really hoping for, considering how uh, intriguing of a character that... Um, that person is. I think she. I think that they use female pronouns. But yeah, it's it's very very fascinating uh, character. It's a very very fascinating character that I want more of, and I was kind of disappointed wasn't in there. But that's okay. Now, before we get on to Erica Quell, who in my opinion is one of my favorite Star Wars characters right now, because I don't know whether or not I like her or not. Still, let's move on to really two, the other two members of Alphabet Squadron, which is Will Lark and Nath Tenzin, because their story is very much intertwined in this book in particular. They spend a vast portion of this um, book together and evolving together and interacting with each other and uh, dealing with each other, basically, which is interesting because Nath Tenzin is the old, old, old veteran that is, that only really went to the rebellion because he got, he, he got found out for doing criminal stuff with, uh, when he was a uh, squadron leader for the empire. And then his entire, uh, uh, squadron got destroyed by shadowing. And then he got, and, got, and then he kind of got vengeance, uh, in the end of the first book. So now he's just kind of, da, 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 da. Uh, and he's very, very cold and pragmatic and jaded and whatever. And then there's Will Lark, who's very, very hopeful, the youth, the the farm boy, uh, effectively, when it comes to um, archetypes, at least. <laughs> we'll put it this way. One of my notes literally says, you lawful, stupid, glorious moron, Will Lark. <laughs> so, yeah. Let me just read this full note that I wrote out here. The harsh truth of warfare, you're not fighting for a nation or a political system. You're fighting for your buddies next to you. Noticed when Will Lark realized that his attempts to negotiate would be useless without the backing of his unit. 
uh, Alphabet is only the protagonist because they're willing to abandon their orders and each other to save innocence, uh, while Shadow Wing will commit genocide to protect each other. That is the real difference between Shadow Wing and Alphabet Squadron. That's the real difference between the Empire and um, Imperial Soldiers and Rebellion Soldiers, is that are you willing to sacrifice, because that's what you're going to do as a soldier. Uh, I've never served uh, as a member of the military. I do have a f quite a few friends that have served, and I've been a bit of a war nerd um, for most of my life. I have some family members that have served, some family members that have served. And when you are in those combat situations, as I've been told at least, that is what you do, is that you go into protect your buddy mode. Um, you're not fighting because the other side is evil. You're not fighting because you want to protect the people behind, you want to protect the people back home. You're fighting to protect your buddy next to you. And are you willing to sacrifice your humanity in order to protect that buddy is kind of what this particular book tends to lean towards, at least to me. That's what I get out of this book. And in particular, I really picked up on that once we got to uh, Will Lark and um, Nath Tenzin arguing over trying to contact Shadow Wing and negotiate a ceasefire and everything like that. And really, Nath ends up winning uh, that argument a few chapters later, near the very, very end of the book, when Shadow Wing willfully fires, dumps all, a ton of missiles all over the planet of um, Troyth. There we go. All over the planet of Troyth, this massive populated planet, and they just dump missiles uh, in order to try and escape, in order to protect. Keys orders those missiles to be fired in order to protect his wing, his buddies. Whereas I don't think that Will Lark or Nath Tenzent or even Chasnachatic or Harrison Dua or Admiral Akbar would do that. They have the same reason to fight, but it's how are you doing that fight? What are you willing to sacrifice of your own moral character in order to protect the people that you fight for? And I really do think that's the primary theme of this book. With that being said, moving on to Erica Quell, I adore this character so goddamn much. There is a billion notes, so I apologize that there's probably going to be weird, random ramblings about, you know, um, <laughs> Erica Quell, because I've got, like, four or five different big, massive, like, this long paragraphs uh, on Erica. Uh, here we go. Erica's reason for joining the Imp, the Imp Academy was a romantic connection. Erica spent her whole life seeking belonging. Uh, of course, her connection with Shadow Wing was so strong, this leads me to believe that Erica grew more in this book than I thought uh, on first listen. So, effectively, Erica has been spending her entire life searching for belonging, and she left to go join the Imperial Academy because somebody that she finally made a connection with ran off on her, and then she made a connection at the Imperial Academy, so she didn't run off to the Rebellion like she planned in the first place. And then she was willing to commit genocide because she couldn't stand the idea of not having the home that was Shadow Wing. And then she lost Shadow Wing because Shadow Wing told her to leave, effectively. You know, Soren Keys told her to leave. And then she found a connection with Alphabet Squadron, with uh, Karen Aiden, and with uh, ITO, and with um, uh, Chasna Chaddock, and Nath Tenz, and Will Lark, and Kairos, and Harrison Dula. So, of course, she got, like, a tattoo on her bicep of the Alphabet Squad, of, the, of their sigil and stuff. So, she is constantly seeking a piece of a connection, uh, a home. And a 
place of belonging. And that's what mo- that's what the primary drive is behind Erica Quell. <laughs> and that is such a fascinating uh, type of character to me. It's very similar in a lot of ways to what Ray faces in the sequel trilogy. Um, seeking a place and a belonging and a reason to be. And uh, Erica Quell spends a large portion of this book effectively going through cognitive behavior therapy, (laughs) uh, behavioral therapy, um, with a dark side temple observatory thing. (laughs) And at the very end of this book, Erica Quell goes about the, what is it? Um, let's see here. The final question of Shadowfall is, what the hell is Erica Quell doing? Either, this is just my, my theories, either she's reverting due to the strain of losing ITO, Karen Aiden, and the trust of Alphabet Squadron. Keep in mind, again, if you've read this book, you'll know that, which I hope that you have if you've been watching any more of this video, but um, keep in mind that Alphabet Squadron doesn't want her anymore because after Karen Aiden was captured, an automatic message went out that told the entire New Republic, basically, that she was, that she didn't leave shadowing because they were going to commit genocide she left shadowing afterward after she went through operation sender um anyways she's either reverting to the strain of losing ito karen aiden and the trust of alphabet or she's trying to tear shadowing down from within either way karen's the dying words um quote i manage erica quell will be the largest influential moment for Erica in this series. Again, just a prediction for me. I think it's just a question of if those words have already affected her positively, or if they're causing her to mistake moving backward as moving forward. At the end of the day, you have to deal with the sins of your past. And are you going to just keep making instinctive decisions, emotionally charged decisions based purely on those emotions. For example, Erica Quell, are you going to, is Erica Quell going to spend every single choice, every single major life decision that she's made that she hasn't been ordered to do, keep in mind that's not a decision, every single decision that she's made has been purely emotionally based reasoning. Are you going to decide to make what's really true for yourself and your own nature and based on your moral compass as opposed to just an emotional reaction. And I think that that's really the question that Erica Quell is going to have to answer to herself um, in book three of this trilogy. Anyways, I have now been recording for uh, 31 minutes. So... (laughs) I am going to finish up this recording. Thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of this book down in the uh, comments below. Uh, make sure to hit the podcast, blah, 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 blah. Follow me on Twitter, at SW Ramblings, whatever. I'm not good at this plug stuff. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I love you all very much. And as always, may the force be with you. Take care.